I hope that you enjoy. A quick thank you to the T5 peeps. Bob the Dragon, Data Magnet, Cat Crab Lobster, Dark Machine, Try Again 95, Astray the Dreamer, Mezik, Udic Joel, German Chemist, Casper Arnholtz, and Chaos to Must. Thank you very much. The Dead Race, written by Mercury the Dealer. The galaxy is a dangerous place. It is filled with pirates, exterminators, deceivers, and a million other dangers that every empire must deal with. Our ancestors dealt with these problems much like we did, by thinking about themselves. Empires betrayed each other, went to war, made peace, forged and broke alliances thousands of times per day. Empires rose and fell, yet nothing changed for thousands, perhaps millions of years. That is until the monsters came. We don't know where they came from, who or what made them, not even if they were made, or just some sort of twisted natural force. All we know is that they fought our ancestors. Well, calling it a fight is not fair. It was more akin to beating a small child. The monsters are glassed in dire worlds. Their leviathan so gigantic that they covered whole stars. Their hordes so great that they could cover continents. It didn't take long to realize that they couldn't stand alone against such monstrosities. And so... For the first time in recorded galactic history, all nations stood united against this enemy. The Tentarats warmed their ancient shipyards once more. The Beastful Fredeligians, for the first time in a millennia, prepared for war. People that were once sworn enemies marched shoulder by shoulder. Against their foes, the might of an entire galaxy fighting the monsters with all they could. Our ancestors were sure they would not only win, but eradicate this threat. They lost. The monsters didn't slow down. Not once they retreated. Not once they'd lost. It became evident that the godless things enjoyed toying with their enemies. Planets would be bombarded for months simply for pleasure of seeing the population's will slowly crumble. And if the people ever grew too apathetic towards their suffering, they would stop the bombardment to give them a flicker of hope, which would be swiftly snuffed down by one of the monster's hungry leviathans. In the end, most empires broke, some at the hands of the monsters, some split over civil war, some simply retreated into the interstellar void. The remaining knew that they could not wonder. But they had an idea. They could never kill the monsters, but they could trick them. They made a new intelligent species. They were strong, not so that they could defend themselves, but because it was more entertaining to fight something that possesses a challenge. They were fast, not so that they could chase after prey, but so that they could be fun to chase after. They were made smart, not so that they could build great inventions, but because prey that adapts never becomes too boring to kill. Empathy, endurance, determination, they gave that species a million blessings knowing that those were disguised curses. Curses that would ensure that when the monsters finally reached Sol, they would stay there, toying with the poor creatures, just long enough for the empires to make a trap. They could not destroy the monsters, but they could imprison them a cage was set with technology barely understood, gifted by even more ancient empires shortly before they too collapsed. They built a trap, and that species was the lure. In the end, the Alabari were the ones to name the species. They called them humans. Gaia is an ancient word for the Alabari. It is the name of the pedestal in which animals would be sacrificed usually to give the city protection from evil spirits. A voting name for the third planet of the Sol system. The planet was lush with life, though none of it was intelligent. Humans were sent to this planet with basic tools and weapons, along with schematics and cultural texts as the ancients could fill the ship's service with. Lastly, 
The ancients built the planet with anti-war weapons meant to activate once the monsters surrounded the planet. It wouldn't destroy them, but it would certainly slow them down. Then, humanity was left alone to entertain the coming beasts while the ancients made the final preparations of the trap. The day came. The monsters reached Gaia and a single massive fleet surrounded the planet, too drunk with anticipation to check for any traps. And for the first time in centuries, their unstoppable march grinded to a halt. The planet's defenses shot against the fleets with all their might. Enough metal to build a moon was launched towards the beasts. Lasers as bright as supernovas melt through the flesh of the feared leviathans. Black old missiles destroyed millions before fading. In the end, the monsters were broken, but not destroyed. Their remains would still be enough to destroy the ancestors, which is why after the last of the projectiles were launched, the last of the laser batteries were dried, and the last of the missiles were activated. The Great Barrier came online. Hyperlanes were broken with experimental technology. Hundreds of layers of antimatter fields all activated in unison. Stars were forced to go supernova. A million pieces came together in perfect harmony to imprison the monsters inside. The ancestors slowly rebuilt themselves. A new era had begun. One that would surely bring peace and prosperity to all. Monuments were raised in celebration to the defeat of the monsters. Humanity became a symbol of honorable sacrifice. The great martyrs of the galaxy. A species that they promised would never be forgotten. We broke that promise. It happened slowly at first. A few empires put less effort into teaching ancient history. Some others were born long after the monster's defeat and thus didn't care about some ancient dead race. We had more important matters to teach after all. Technology, politics, war. Databases with human history were white because... Why waste all that space on a dead species? Soon, things were back to the way they usually were. Both with pirates, experiments, deceivers, and a million other dangers that every empire must deal with. And like usual, all empires looked after themselves, and only themselves. All things as they should be. Until they weren't. The first to notice were the prospect. A research station close to the Great Barrier detected a small breach, normal in that region, except that instead of shrinking, this one was growing. Antimatter fields were set up in the region. They did not stop the breach. More fuel was added to the ancient generators. That also did nothing. Soon, other empires found out about the breach. Panic and horror ensued. Some believed that it was a natural occurrence due to the ancient generators finally fading. Some believed the monsters were back. Others had a million different theories. In the end, all we could do was wait. By the time the breach grew to the size of an average ship, we could finally see what was on the other side. And what we saw was death incarnate. Millions, maybe billions of ship black as the void surrounded the breach like predators ready to pounce. Alarms were sent throughout the galaxy as fleets were prepared and new ones were built and sent for battle at the breach. And for the second time in galactic history, all nations stood united against this enemy. If the ancestor's defeat was akin to beating a child, ours was like beating a baby. As soon as their first ship passed the breach, it launched a single torpedo. A torpedo aimed directly at one of the ancient generators. We tried to stop it. We failed. It swerved and moved too fast to be hit, and a few hits we did get were swatted like flies by its shield. Without the generator, the breach grew and grew until the fleet became completely visible. Billions of black ships, many bigger than the biggest capital ships ever built moved in perfect unison towards us. A single message was sent to the capital ships of every nation present. We did our purpose. Where are the fathers? Panic invaded every admiral at the thought that the enemy somehow broke their encryption. 
translated their language, and sent a message in mere seconds of seeing them. Said panic led to them firing upon the enemy with all they had. The void itself grew brighter than any star as the combined might of the galaxy fired upon the enemy fleet. They didn't even slow down. Another message came to the admirals. You are not the fathers. They launched another torpedo. This time it was aimed at the galactic fleet. Then the fleet's signals went dark. The combined might of the entire galaxy was gone with a single attack. The beasts that passed through the breach were not the monsters of old. That was clear. The monsters toyed with their prey. They tortured and found joy in inflicting pain. The beasts simply marched on. They utterly exterminated any that stood in their path, always sending the same request to find the fathers. Many theories were made as to who the fathers were. None were conclusive. Hope dwindled as the beings split off into smaller but still gigantic fleets. Each one approached a different core world. We knew what that meant. Extermination. Across the galaxy, each core world's sky darkened as the blanket of black smoke was released by the beasts. Some cried, some screamed, some laughed. We were all sure that this was the end. A death by an unknown, uncaring, and unkillable enemy. Then, like lightning in a storm across the darkened skies of our worlds, a recording appeared. A strange creature, seemingly hairless in all but the head stood in a dark room, screens spread on desks and walls being the main source of light. After a moment, that felt like an eternity. She spoke. This is High Speaker Eve Heiner today. The ninth day of the eleventh month of the fiftieth year is a day of mourning for us all. The city of New June has been destroyed by the menace. They fought bravely, and thus their sacrifice will not be forgotten. May the fathers embrace them. Before anyone could process what had just happened, another recording appeared. This time it appeared to be a male he was taller and had grey hair and his face. He spoke in a much deeper voice than his predecessor. This is High Speaker Carl Harkins. I am proud to announce that today, the 17th day of the 6th month of the 90th year, we successfully exterminated all menace present in Gaia. Humanity stands once more, but the enemy still works in the void. We conquered the land, we shall conquer the skies. For the fathers! The recordings went on and on. Messages of great sorrow and pride, losses and victory. Slowly, however, the number of victories increased. The room where the so-called high speakers stood on became bigger, brighter. After year 400, it went from claustrophobic and dark to spacious and active. People walked and worked in the background. By 600, the room was now in space, and the background was a proud image of the planet below. The speakers kept changing dramatically, too. Some clearly had synthetic augments to advance for anyone to even know what they did. Some were ten feet tall behemoths of muscle, which were clearly genetically modified. The only thing that was consistent was their reverence to the fathers. After three hours of silently watching the recordings, the skies became black once more. Moments later, a new face appeared. This new speaker had thick blonde hair surrounding his face. His eyes stared into all of us, as if it could see and judge us through the skies. He spoke with a rough voice. This is I speaker Jake at home today, the thirtieth day of the twelfth month of the fifteen thousandth year. I am... The man seemed to choke on his word, clearly trying to control himself. I am here to inform you all that the fathers are no more. The words were met with confusion and despair. Confusion as to who the fathers were, and despair for what these beasts would do after discovering the supposed extinction of their fathers. The message continued. Our fathers may be gone, but our purpose stands. They made us to clean the universe of evil. 
the merit, the monsters, and we have all served this purpose with honor, dignity, and diligence. The man's face changed to show enough determination that he might have ignited our planets by sheer will. He opened his mouth and bellowed, Our duty still stands! The menace still lurks in the shadow of the galaxies, and we shall bring the light for the fathers, for the fallen, for humanity. The words echoed through the core worlds like gunshots. Many still had a vague idea of what the humans were mostly taught as a footnote in ancient history. And the thought that this was a supposedly dead species made the blood all run cold. It was clear that they held a grudge for leaving them dead. They had just stated their intentions for cleansing the universe, and we were the first to go. They just wanted to let us know why. We all held our breath, hoping that whatever weapon they planned on using was at least quick. They just left, all of them, at the same time just left. The skies went back to their natural blue, or green, or yellow. The ships that could destroy us all with a single firing of their guns all just went back to the Great Barrier. We tried talking to them a few times, and they always responded with the same message. We have a duty. Stand back. No one was stupid enough to try and stop them. We were just glad to be alive. The day they went back to the Great Barrier was met with mixed emotions. Some were happy that things were finally left. Some were angry that the beings who caused so much chaos were leaving unpunished. Scientists were disappointed that they wouldn't get to study the humans anymore. And admirals were concerned at the thought that the beasts could come back at any time. And they would be hopeless to do much. Many empires came together in the aftermath, some because of the fear of what lay beyond our vision, some because they wanted to kill the humans together, a few because they were inspired by what humanity had achieved. It didn't last, of course. In a couple decades, all those alliances broke, each simply thinking about themselves, about pirates, exterminators, deceivers, and a million other dangers. Empires were born, lived, and inevitably died. The galaxy is dangerous, after all. But there is still a constant. With every cycle, with every birth and death, the galaxies change. Scans show the galaxies brightened, as if a fog had been cleared. Suns appearing where we thought only void existed. And we all knew the reason. Humanity, the undead race, had been fighting the monster's darkness, and they had been winning. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed. Uh